graceandtruthradio.world proudly presents Life Coaching for Men, improving their relationships with their wives and learning to communicate for a more fulfilling and satisfying marriage. And now, Men Loving Well with Christian counselor, author, and relationship coach, Dr. Jim Slaughter. For everyone listening today, this is part two of a conversation I had with Greg Matthews, author of the new book, Wild Awakening, How a Raging Grizzly Healed My Wounded Heart. Listen as Greg shares more of his story. I was going to restate the title of your book, Yes, sir. Wild Awakening, How a Raging Grizzly Healed My Wounded Heart. Anyone who reads your book will not be the same. They simply will not be the same. I promise. And they will be awakened to the truth that God awakened you to in the process. You put so much of yourself into what we've already done that you may not have anything left. I don't know. But I would love to give you the opportunity uh, as God leads to open yourself up. And if there's if there are things that you didn't get to say in the preceding time that we've had we would love to hear from you more. If uh... I would, I would love to do that. And actually, um, it provides an opportunity because, especially in the last year, where I've really been promoting an inanimate object, one dimension, talking about a book, talking about <laughs> right. the attack. Finally, it's coming out, and my readers and my friends and my family have been alongside, and they've been so patient. And so, me not sharing. But just skimming the surface of the book is important because I want to I want to honor the future right, readers. Right, I think that's a wise decision, and uh, we want we want to leave a lot of the meat and power in the book to them to read and discover on their own. And I think that's a wise thing. Okay. I was wondering what part might have been left out of God's presence mm-hmm. in the story. I know that you you mentioned that. God brought your family to mind in the midst of all that. Absolutely. Did you see their faces? I absolutely did see their faces. And if you can imagine, I would imagine it's it's consistent in combat and and, and everything that that once you're faced, there's what? There's no atheists in foxholes? No, sir. And um, whether you believe it or not, is there is no bearing as to whether God exists. Right. There, it just, God does exist. He will show up and has shown up on multiple times. And, and part of what he did was he gave me, um, an image that allowed, when you start talking about the ability to overcome, I, I don't think I, I, I know I could never be a, a Navy SEAL. I, I think, I think that takes a lot more grit than I have. But when you start talking about men like that inspired um, for their country mm-hmm. and for what this country stands for and the patriotism and, and the, the blood that has been shed for this country, the sacrifice that has been made that I think it oftentimes, um, it seems like it's forgotten, but the people I run with, it, it's not forgotten at all. We right. are very, very serious about what we do Mm -hmm. and protecting that this great republic and this great democracy but when you have something like that that inspires your heart if your heart is covered with 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 a cancerous pain there's no way that you can be able to aspire to what god has called you to be so you have to let him in to do the surgery and part of that surgery was allowing him to be inside of me during that moment and being willing to listen to what he was telling me about being um, that I had to fight. And then on top of that, he gave me the image of my family. And it goes into great detail about what I saw. Mm -hmm. But absolutely, there was um, there was an image that was one of the gifts, one of the uh, the things that that God gave me. And in the midst of all that to inspire the the energy and the clarity and the will to survive because there was a lot ahead of me and I was thinking about all that I just wanted to curl up and just roll over and just I'm very tired yeah I'm done 
Yeah. What do you hope will come out of the book as men read your story about, especially the, as, as God, the power of God came to you, the voice of God came to you, you, you experienced him in a, in a new way. Uh, he gave you clear power to put one foot in front of the other, different things like that. And it's hard for me to talk about it without giving too much away too. But I'm just thinking, will men, will men read this book and then believe God for bigger things in their own life? Absolutely. <laughs> I am, I'm convinced of it. And it wasn't that I was convinced of it beforehand. What, what convinces me of that is the reaction that I'm getting from, from men of God mm-hmm. that, uh, what I feel are men of God that are, that are pillars in, in Christian, the Christian community. As I was going through this process, when you have John Eldridge, willing to read your book and then endorse it and have his endorsement on the cover of your book. Mm -hmm. John O'Leary, who wrote On Fire. Pastor Gene Getz, um, The Measure of a Man. Right. Pastor Robert Schuller of the Crystal Cathedral. All of these men that are pillars that have are, these men aren't in their relationships with God. This isn't milk. These are these are meat eaters, right? Right. right. Okay, so these guys are the ones that uh, um, you look up to and you go to for guidance. I was very humbled when they were willing to endorse the book, but the fact is, the fact that they were seeing um, those things in this book, in my writing, was um, it was just. I saw God's fingerprints all over it. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Tell us a little bit about your relationship with your brother, Matt. My brother, Matt, he's my little brother. Mm -hmm. But he's not so little. He's (laughs) 6'4". And uh, he is a mountain of a man. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Um, He's a man of God. He served his country a full 20 years in the Air Force with two different tours over in the sandbox. Mm -hmm. Um, He's got five children who they've all homeschooled. Amazing man, amazing family. Um, Another miracle, his, uh, his courage and his obedience to what God was telling him during that whole thing. He could have easily, any lesser of a person or connection to me, I don't know if I would have gone through with with going up and and doing what he did during that whole event. Mm-hmm. Um, he's my hero. I got a lot of heroes, but he's definitely one of the, on the short list. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's uh, six years six years younger than I. Mm-hmm. So my um, middle brother Shane, we were closer, mm-hmm. but we all. We're very close. Right. Yeah. We love each other very much. We're all walking with the Lord mm. and uh, are raising our families in the Lord. And uh, he was the one that made all the difference that the, the Lord used him in a very, very special way out there. And and uh, definitely don't want to give it away, but something happened that literally, because I, I was, I spent a lot of money on that trip. And it was only probably half the cost of going with a guy that usually averages anywhere between eighteen and $20,000 mm-hmm. to be able to go on a 10-day guided hunt in Alaska. So there was, there was some things that, that I was bitter about, even coming out of surgery, but I had anesthesia. I had a lot of different stuff going on, um, but there was a, there was a, an event that will blow people away. Absolutely. Yep. Um, that when they when they see this, to answer your question, um, they're going to have to work really hard to discount it mm-hmm. and to say, "Yeah, that's that's just all made up. That's all in his mind." Mm-hmm. And so. To answer your question, there will absolutely 
and and you could say it better than anybody else, but I've had people say that at times the book is so overwhelming that you have to put it down at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are parts of it that are so vivid and, and real that you it, it, it can be uh, necessary to, to take a break. Yes. Take a break. But And I wanted to, to reemphasize what you said, too. And I, I made such a point of... Uh, you know, just mentioning to whet people's appetites early on about the attack. <coughs> Excuse me. But the, you you probably would say that the, I mean, you already have really, that the book is not principally about the attack. It's, not. it's what God did in the midst of all that. Yes. And so it's so, it's an inspiring book, you know, for, for men who read it uh, in different ways. But, I, you know, I, my conviction, all men are looking for God. Absolutely. They're looking for God to show up mm -hmm. in some way. It may not be in the midst of a of uh, something like you experience, mm -hmm. but uh, men are looking for God in what are, in, in different parts of their life. Absolutely. And so this, this is an inspiring book. It's an inspiring story that no matter who you are and what you're going through, God wants to show up mm -hmm. with you, you know, and, and to expect that. Yes. Very well said. Well, thank you. It showed that, that it meant that to me. Honestly, Ann and I have experienced a kind of revitalization of our connection with God. Amen. And a lot of that, I think, has come out of your sharing your experience in, in your book. And then we've gotten to know you and, and just in chats <laughs> that we've had and meals that we've had and things like that. You yes, know, sir. We don't want to. This is not our story. It's your story, you know. But, but you're coming alongside <laughs> and that's. See, if I could just share with you something we talked about today, mm -hmm. when when God is moving in different people, moving them forward through obedience and, and through, and I am far removed from being perfect, but all I pray for now is I pray for wisdom and I pray for obedience because I do not want to miss when God moves. Oh, and that, that basically comes down to, and it's an important, important thing i think men already know that we are tight boxes in keeping our emotions and a lot of our pain that's one element but what i would emphasize to folks is men a lot of times will use a spreadsheet in a lot of things okay i've got eight good things i've got six bad things and okay i'm still good with god but when that gets out of balance we start moving away from god or even the concept of God, because we feel like we can't approach them or we uh, can't approach God. Right. Okay. In a lot of different ways. Yeah. But what I will share with you is what this book does is it, it doesn't remove the authority by any means of God, but it brings him down to a point where God becomes dad and mm. a father. And I think that that, when it comes down to that with men, Men want a father that's proud of them, that's going to love them despite all of their brokenness, despite all of their failures, despite that maybe they didn't end up being what they intended to be. But when you bring God to what he is really, what he really is and wants to be is in a relationship, father, son, father, daughter, and you bring a book that shows the reality of this, it's not talking about Okay, check, I went to church, check, I prayed, check, I read the Bible. Oh, miss my men's group, move that to the <laughs> the other side. Because men are like that. They look at that and they're like, okay, I'm still good. I've got one more on the good side than I do the bad side. That, this is, it totally dispels any of that. It just brings it down to relationship with the Almighty God, Almighty Creator, where you feel as a son, you have access to your dad that you can crawl up on that throne, crawl up on his lap, throw your arms around him, nestle into his neck and say, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Absolutely. It's forgotten. Your dad grabs you. It's never remembered again. And you're just arm in arm with your dad. That's what that's the message I want to bring in this book. I think you do that really, really well in the book. And we want everyone to, uh, boy, when, when does the book actually come out? It comes out, it's released June 18th, 18th, which is next Tuesday. And then I know this is going to come out, I think, Thursday. But we are having, we're going to be having our big book launch 
at okay. Interbank Books in Dallas. Okay. Greg, uh, we've wondered as we've talked about um, the book and the story and God's power and all of that. Um, how has your relationship with your own family these days changed? How has it changed t- today from what it was like before all that happened to you? That's a great question. And I think it goes to the core of um, starting uh, the ministry of Chase What Matters. Um, when I got back, having gone through all of that stuff, you can imagine I was reset into normalcy. Mm-hmm. You know, here I am in my house again. My family's running around. We're getting kids up for school. All right. All this stuff. We're back in the normalcy. And bam, it hits me. It's like I was begging for another opportunity mm-hmm. to make things right, to bring balance where I, my term that I use for myself is I traded treasure for trash. Mm. And, uh, and what that means is as a man going back to what we all search for to be affirmed, Mm -hmm. to be recognized, um, those are things that were in us that were supposed to be brought to light in a relationship with God. But if, if you're absent of relationship with God or a father, then those are empty pieces that continue to call at you. And the world Mm -hmm. has shaped, this is what a man looks like. Mm -hmm. And so we are constantly striving like that. And so how it changed me was I was that. I was, like it says, the poster child of trying to accomplish things. Mm -hmm. And everything had to be more dangerous, more advanced, I had to get those things to feel okay with Greg because I couldn't come back with the same thing. You've already seen that. There's no room for you to say, wow, that's awesome. But hey, yeah, you did that last week. (laughs) So you can imagine what kind of bird. Well, think now trying to do all that. Schooling, training, going on calls, doing anything I could, pursuing the next career to build what I, my bona fides. It doesn't leave much time for family. No. It doesn't leave much time investing in your marriage. It doesn't leave much time for investing in your children. And so being in my home, still injured, still wearing the scars, and knowing that my, my request had been answered by the Lord for one more chance to make it right. Mm. At that point, I had basically decided that I'm going to start chasing what matters. And what matters to me, and it may not be for everyone, but what matters to me is I can still help. I have, I'm have. i a protector. I'm a server of people. Mm-hmm. That's, that was, makes my heart ring and sing mm-hmm. is doing that. But what I do it, when I do it now, it's everything in moderation, I'm not looking for that next goal. I'm doing what I can where I'm at. And I'm taking that time and I'm investing in my wife. I'm investing in listening to her. I'm investing in communicating. I'm investing in being in in men's groups so I can improve my ability to communicate and to be those things that that I used to just run back and kind of maintain. Okay, you got enough money. You got money for groceries. Good to go. All right, you've got your grades. All right, yeah, you should probably do better there. And and then run back. And I'll tell you what my heart did. Right. My heart was only halfway in. Yeah. But come back to my careers, come back to stopping terrorists, come back to doing these, fighting a structure fire, cutting somebody out of a car, starting a, a national emergency service system in the jungles of Uganda that's where my heart resonated because I was so broken. I didn't understand the power and, and the Lord flipped it on me and showed me what really, really brings purpose, mm-hmm. what ring, what brings joy and real life to us is what's inside. And it's the heart. And that heart has to be in relationship. And I mean, what did God after he made the earth and he made Adam? He said, you needed somebody else. He made the first family. I mean, that was, 
There was a reason for that. Yes, yes. Am I, you know, I mean, and that's, so to me, I am just doing my best. And my wife will tell you, I'm still broken in many ways, but I'm trying and I'm engaged. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't tell my kids and my wife that I love them or show them through actions that not saying, hey, look at me, look at what I'm doing, but mm. investing in the things that are important to them. Mm. It's completely changed my outlook, and now I'm just walking it out. Well, you know, um, to hear you say that, you have spoken and lived richness into your family, mm. it seems to me, with what God has placed on your mind and your heart to become for them, yes. you know? And I was thinking, they must feel like they're, they're living such luxury in a way from a family perspective to have you. Uh, I was wondering if there was a point in which they wondered who you were. <laughs> probably. I don't know, maybe not. Probably but. because I'm a very, I'm an alpha male, concrete, sequential, black and white individual that uh -huh. um, my wife is the the lover, the hugger and everything in the family. And I'm not that I'm not like that, but I'm learning to be like that more. And I think it's important of being... I'm not afraid to admit when you make mistakes. Uh -huh. And uh, something that, you know, I went through a divorce, a, a divorce that was caused by my deep fear of bringing kids into the world because I know how I, how broken I was and how um, I did not want my children to ever experience anything like that right and so it literally got to the point which is i mean she was a wonderful woman and and the fact is that uh um i just could not bring myself to i thought at some point it would be okay and it would be i would say yeah but there was just too much pain and i know that the the tremendous weight and burden that i walked every day of my life trying to prove myself to the world because of some really horrendous wounds. Mm -hmm. And I was convinced that those wounds would be overlaid on my children. And I wasn't willing to, to, to do that. So, um, there has been a lot of change. And one of the things that I will share with you with teenagers, it's very tough to see through some of that stuff to see where you, you might be, um, making a difference mm -hmm. as a dad. Yep. But one night, um, I get a text from Benjamin, from Ben. He likes to be called, he doesn't want me to call him Benjamin, from Ben. Mm -hmm. In the text, um, he said, hey, Dad, can I have, um, can I have Uncle Matt's phone number? And uh, I said, sure. So I sent him the contact and I thought about it. And I said, well, I wonder why he wants Uncle <laughs> Matt. He never calls Uncle Matt. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just asked him, I said, hey. Um, why, why is it you want Uncle Matt's, uh, phone number? And he just said, um, I want to call him and tell him thank you for just being there. Yeah. Yeah. This affects you so much. And it's, it's so, um, telling, you know, on your face and your voice. Mm -hmm. so important to you and has made such a huge impact on you. The response of your children, Ben, we just met him. What a wonderful kid he is, yeah. you know. And uh, for him to want to... Oh, yeah, absolutely. For him to want to express his gratitude to your brother for playing such a a big part in uh, your... your uh, that, was, that, was, that was huge for me. Yeah. In here... So simple, but it was just huge because it just showed that I was beginning to really chase what matters. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Well, thank you again, um, Greg, so welcome. much. Uh, it's just great to, to have gotten to meet you and be with you and spend time with you. We look forward to maybe, you know, if God wills, uh, meet the rest of your family and Absolutely. spend some time together. and and do some things that would be really fun. So um, we're just blessed that we uh, have had you to, to 
give this message out to the world that needs it and Amen. and is waiting for it. And uh, pretty soon your book will be on the shelves and uh, it'll be a bestseller. Well, you know, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> and uh, I just want to say that um, it's been a privilege and an honor to, to share this with you. And, mm. you know, people are brought into your lives for um, a reason and a season mm-hmm. and a lifetime. And I think uh, you and Anne are kind of in the lifetime category so i'm looking forward to getting to know uh, both of you a lot more well it means a lot to us to hear you say that and we feel the very same way so uh, god bless you greg Thank and you, uh, we wish you all the success in the world with your book and your life and everything that goes along with it thank you very much god You're bless welcome. you thank you and you, thank you all for being with us today and listening go and love well amen Thank you again for joining us. Men Loving Well airs live every Thursday at 1030 a.m. Central Time on graceandtruthradio.world. If you would like to contact or coach with Dr. Jim Slaughter, reach out to him on facebook.com, livingwellshow. Email him at jslaughterphd at yahoo.com or contact him at his clinic, Life Solutions, 817-232-232. One three six three. We look forward to seeing you again next week here on Men Loving Well. Life Solutions Coaching and Counseling in Fort Worth, Texas is a full-service wellness clinic providing individual, group, and family counseling, one-on-one coaching for life and wellness, and naturopathic treatments of medical massage therapy combined with essential oils to ensure you reach your health and wellness goals. Sessions are available in person or by phone. Get started on your new life today. Just call 817-232-1363 or go to lifesolutionscoachingandcounseling.com or email them at lifesolutions.com cc at yahoo.com